So I want to just pick up on, on that one line. Come, let us make us a name for ourselves. And here's where I really do want to kind of move us into the, to the Abram story. And there's one, there's one particular rabbinic tradition that I, that I just absolutely love. And, and I'll admit, I'm, um, um, I love reading about uh, Abraham, uh, of all the patriarchs. He seems to be the one, I say, he's the one who's most interesting to me because there's a sort of active passivity to the way in which he kind of moves himself about uh, in this in this world, he seems to be somebody who desires to do justice, and simultaneously seems to always want to avoid strife as well. So, I think that line for the Tower of Babel, "Come, let us make our name." I think it ties in uh, here to Abram's uh, Abraham's own uh, lineage, his father Terah. Terah uh, begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begot Lot. And, and Haran died in the lifetime of Terah, his father, in the land of his birth, Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and uh, Nahor took themselves wives. The name of Abram's wife was Surah, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, daughter of, of Haran, the father of Milcah and the father of Iscah. And Surah was barren. She had no child. So I just want to stop there. We begin the Abraham story with the reminder, already beginning, that Sarah was, was barren. Contrast that with what, does the, what do the men of the Tower of Babel desire? They desire to make a name for themselves. Here you have a, the beginning of the barren wife narrative. And we know this is going to be something that uh, uh, Abraham pursues, even with God, uh, with the desire to have a child. This is what I went over in the Isaac story on the online course. But here there's a beautiful rabbinic, there's a beautiful rabbinic uh, tradition um, that, uh, that, uh, that Abram actually marries. <clears throat> um, this is a barren wife of Haran, his brother. And he knows that she's barren. Um, um, and, and this is why he takes her on. And so this is the way in which we see uh, Abram is kind of uh, giving himself over to his duty to his brother, even even to build up a name for his brother, um, um, uh, if he can. Of course, she's barren, so he can't. But even then, if she were able to be able to have children, he would be not making a name for himself. If we follow the Leverett marriage codes. He would be making a name for his brother. He would be offering all of this up. In fact, when he comes to God in chapter 15 and he's worried about his offspring, and he says, you know, am, am I just going to have to have Damasek Eliezer? Is that who I'm going to have to build up through all of this? He, he eventually becomes worried about his offspring. He becomes worried about uh, his name. But here, like I said, in this rabbinic tradition, there's something beautiful uh, with, with Abram. Uh, in as much as he's, there's something he's willing to offer of himself or to sacrifice uh, of himself uh, in order for, um, uh, in order to, to build up his brother's name. So that's the movement I love to see the difference between the Tower of Babel and moving into the Abram story is here is a man that we see who uh, is willing to do something outside of himself, beyond himself, and specifically to do for others. And it's important, we'll eventually get to the scene of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the question of justice and, and righteousness becomes a key question. Um, and what I would submit to you is that Abram is a, is a very, very just man. And he gives us, I think within Scripture, he gives us some pretty unique um, pretty unique examples of how to deal uh, with regards uh, to justice.